kind of a heart. <laughs> I shared on my Instagram yesterday how when I mess up my latte art, I just pretend like I was trying to make Baymax. <laughs> so y'all, I literally have the most glorious news. I'm so excited. My oven got fixed yesterday. So we replaced, our oven broke at the beginning of the year, which is kind of like the final straw that spurred us to do our um, remodel in our house. And we bought new appliances and remodeled our kitchen, went months without, obviously with a working kitchen and with a working oven. And I've so enjoyed my kitchen massively, but then, like a little while ago, about a month ago, my oven, my new oven broke. <clears throat> and then my dishwasher broke. And they were both under warranty, but the technician was having a hard time figuring out what was going on. And we've been without a, an oven for a month. And sweet Maya, he is so sweet. But after like the fifth time of the technician coming out, and not figuring it out, he called and was, he was stern Maya and was like, listen, we're getting mighty close to Thanksgiving for us to not have an oven. We have a big family. Like we need to be able to use our oven. This is brand new and I want it fixed or replaced. So they sent out a guy that figured it out like the first time that he came out and fixed my dishwasher and my oven. So my, my kitchen feels like fully functional again for the first time in, so I'm gonna bake some pumpkins. I've had these pumpkins sitting on my counter for, I don't know, close to two months now. They're still good, but like the, the, like the walls are just a little bit, they're not as firm as they were, but you can tell that they really needed to get used. And I have a roaster oven that I could have, I could have done this in a roaster oven, but I just haven't. That's what the kids had asked for was pumpkin pies. So I didn't wanna just make them and, putting pies in the roaster oven, they just don't cook evenly. So I'm just gonna bake these pie pumpkins. If you've only bought canned pumpkin making your like pumpkin stuff, we're going into pumpkin pie time, pumpkin spice season. Making it from like sugar pumpkins like this, it's really easy. Uh, you you literally just bake them for, it's like takes like 45 minutes in like a 350 degree oven. And then you scoop all this stuff out. And I would say it's a pretty big game changer. I mean, canned pumpkin is still good. I still use canned pumpkin, especially whenever I'm wanting to make something quick. Like I'll, I'll make pumpkin bread and stuff like that for breakfast for the kids. But uh, especially whenever it's like holidays and I'm trying to make pumpkin pies especially, I really love to use fresh pumpkin for things like that. I'm scooping these seeds as I talk, which these I'm going to bake as well for us to be able to eat them. And even if you get just like a pumpkin to carve as a jack-o'-lantern, you can save the seeds from them. Now, as far as growing saved seeds from commercially grown pumpkins, or even like if you buy them from local farms, you can do that. And I have, I have saved the seeds from, pum or from pumpkins or squashes that I got like at Trader Joe's or whatever, you know, just at the grocery store. You are taking a risk that they could be cross-pollinated. Now there's this thing that gets shared a lot online about the potential for toxic cross-pollinated squashes. Um, it gets shared every year and people get really scared about it. My take on it is this, that is the thing that can happen. There are some squashes that when they cross pollinate with one another, they can produce a fruit that will make you sick. However, what those articles don't usually say, cause like we did like a lot of research on this because it was being shared in our Facebook group this year. Essentially, if it's a toxic squash from a, from like a cross pollination gone wrong, they're very, very bitter, like inedibly bitter. And so it's not like you're gonna sit down and enjoy a delicious piece of pumpkin pie and then die. Like that's not gonna happen. If, if it, if, it, if you ever grow something in your garden and it's unbearably like bad tasting, you know, don't eat it. Like, it, you know, I mean, in, in that case, with this thing that people were so scared of, it would be pretty obvious. There's another thing that like, people would be like, don't eat green ground cherries. They're, they're very, they're toxic. And I think that's a good thing to share. It's good to tell people that, but you should also tell them that they taste awful. Like if you are eating enough green ground cherries to make yourself sick, 
you have like really, I mean, a, a strong will. Like they taste so bad. I ate one once because people were talking about don't eat these, they'll make you sick. And someone else said they're really bitter. And I tasted one and I was like, oh gosh, like why would you? Like why would you sit back and, and, and chow down on these? But it's good to share cross-pollinated pumpkins, squashes can be toxic, but it's not that's not the norm. That's a rare thing and you'll know if that's what happened. So that said, I have saved seeds from commercial pumpkins or squashes. Like last year I saved some from these little honey nut squash uh, seeds from Trader Joe's and grew them and they were all cross pollinated. They were more like big butternuts and then some of them were like really round shaped. They were all edible, but uh, they weren't what I was trying to grow. So my oven is preheated to 350. I've put these on two different plates. These were washed, so I mean they're like good and clean. You can take the stem off. Um, I'm not going to, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna scoop all of this stuff out once it's done. And I am going to just Pierce the skin a handful of times with a knife. Some like recipes online will tell you to cover these with oil. Um, I don't, I don't usually do that. I have before like put olive oil on them, but it's, then you can taste it. Then they taste like olive oil. So I just don't put anything on them. I do use baking stones, which don't really stick. So I guess if you were gonna be put them on a metal pan, you might wanna put some sort of oil or spray it or whatever you do to keep it from sticking. So these are face down pure skins. I'm gonna stick them in this 350 degree oven and just until they're like good and soft, I can scoop out all the insides. My oven being functional brings me so much joy. Another thing that I've got going on in the kitchen right now, I'll show you guys. I did this last night and it's still cooking. We got, um, we got our first cow back. So we did a trade with our friends, Ben and Andrea Vinson at VW Family Farm. They have a YouTube channel and they live 45 minutes away from us. And back in, I don't know, like last winter, I think it was. We did a trade and Maya did some work for them, helping them build a mobile chicken coop. And in trade, we bought a cow and they grass fed it for us. We just got that back. And one of the things that we got back was all of the like marrow bones and uh, neck bones and all of that stuff, which I currently have simmering in this big 22 quart roaster oven making broth. And I really don't have like a, a formal recipe for this, but I'll tell you guys what I do. I keep a roaster oven like this for making a second like turkey or ham at Thanksgiving. So we have a really big family and we usually invite other people to holidays. So I'm usually cooking a whole lot. And the other thing that I use this for is broth. Um, that's the main thing that I use it for actually. The reason why I use these big roaster ovens to make broth is because like all these, these stock bones, I put them in there and roasted them first. If you're gonna make broth, it's really good to roast your bones first. Or if you're using like the leftover bones, if you roasted like a whole chicken, then they're already roasted. But like these were just raw. And so I put them all in there and I roast them on high. This works just like an oven, but it also kind of works like a crock pot. You can put liquid in it and slow cook it. And after they're roasted, then I put all of the water in there, a splash of apple cider vinegar and turn the heat down. And I'm just simmering these on low for at least 24 hours you can go up to 48 hours. Actually, I should clarify. You can go more than that, that but you run the risk of your broth turning or your stock turning. And I'm not gonna go into all of that right now. There's a big matter of opinion. People have very strong opinions about how long you should simmer your stock. I usually do roughly 36 to 48 hours. And with these, I started them last night. They're gonna cook all day today through tonight and then tomorrow morning, I'll actually strain them out and put them in jars and pressure can them. All right, let's do something with these pumpkin seeds. Hey, just got a colander. I'm gonna put these in here and get them good and washed off. I wanna get all of these pumpkin guts off of them. That takes kind of getting your hands in there and pulling them off if you got like a big chunk of pumpkin gut. Okay, so I think I got these for the most part clean. Now I'm gonna lay them out on a towel and pat them to dry. 
seriously, I'm being really ridiculous about my oven being fixed. I'm just thinking. I, I, I want to bake so much. Today's the first cold day. It did not end up freezing last night. It got really close, but I looked out this morning and as it's warmed up, the garden is still green. So it didn't die, thankfully. That's really good. We did end up uh, preparing for it to freeze and it didn't, but it is really cool. And there are gonna be quite a few cool days this week. I was really hoping that I would have my oven back. So I'm gonna do some baking start making some pump, more pumpkin goodies because it's that time of year. I am like a shameless pumpkin spice lover. Like I don't even care how many uh, basic white girl memes I see about pumpkin spice. You can give me all the pumpkin spice things. I love them. Um, if the shoe fits, <laughs> I love pumpkin spice so much. <laughs> and it really is like this season is so categorically like defined by flavors and smells. And so like for me, not having been able to bake, I've been like, man, it's, it's, you know, the end of October, I haven't baked anything all month. And so I'm gonna make some good breads and muffins and just go back to like our typical fallish meals. All right, so these are pretty well dried off. They still got a little moisture on them, but that's okay. There we go. So I'm gonna do these in two batches because I already have two pans in the oven and I don't really have room to do uh, another batch of these. But I've got like a nice layer of these on, single layer. I'm gonna put some ghee on them, which is like clarified butter. Maybe like a tablespoon or so across this. And then that's salted, so I'm just not gonna add anything else to these right now. Hey Ben, what's up bro? Hey mom. Hey baby. Hi mom. And I'm gonna stick these in the 350 degree oven. You could do a 400 degree oven. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes just till they get good and toasty and I'm gonna stir them a couple of times. What'd you see? I'm making pumpkin pie. <gasps> yeah. It was a pumpkin pie. Yeah. I, I saw the pumpkin in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> is our oven working? Yeah, it's fixed. Well, what is it so I can make this baby pancake knife? Is that too? So I can make Dutch baby pancakes? Yes, is I can. All right. Downstairs, I gotta show you guys one more very exciting thing. There it is. Are you excited, Ben? I said a spook. You saw it? <laughs> Last night, we lit the first fire of the season down here in our fireplace. Now, I prefer the garden 100%. I prefer everything to be green and fruitful and just the time of year that we are constantly outside I would rather that be the season that it is. But I understand that there's a reason why we have rest. I, I understand there's a reason why we have seasons to turn in. And if I have to be inside, <laughs> if I can't be outside with growing things in a green world, if the world is gray and I have to be inside, let it be by a fire with a cup of coffee working on something creative. Last year during the winter, I couldn't share it with you guys at the time because, um, you know, just the way that book contracts work. I actually spent the winter, the, you know, the days down here by the fireplace. This is where we'll do homeschool. This is where we'll read. We watch movies down here. And um, I spent the, the winter time writing my book, which will be out in February. And that is really, really cool. And this year I'm actually working on uh, some projects as well. And I'm really excited to share more of them with you. I wanna give you guys just a really quick look here. I'm gonna try to like cover this. So this is something that I'm currently working on. You'll get this little glimpse. I mentioned this the other day. So like here's a little glimpse at something that I've been working on. And I don't think that does it justice, but uh, I'm very excited to share that with you. Uh, I was not working on that last night. Last night I was trying to spin. <laughs> Whenever we did the first fire, I got my spinning wheel out. Um, and I've been trying to learn how to do that. I may, I've made a couple of little balls of yarn. They're, they're not much to write home about. Uh, everybody assures me that you can just call this art yarn and it'll seem like it's uh, supposed to be that way, but really it's very inconsistent because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Lovely you think Bruce will love them? Yeah. Right now, I've been uh, trying to learn, Bruce but it's them. really cool. This is my beautiful spinning wheel. This was actually sent to me by a viewer, 
it was her um, it was hers and it was just a passion of hers and and she got to the point where she wasn't spinning anymore and she wanted to share it with someone who would appreciate it and I love it look at the tree of life on it isn't that beautiful and I practiced a lot last winter uh, but as soon as the it came time to do the garden I had to really shift and all my extra time had to go to getting the garden in and then maintaining it so I have just been waiting for this season to come back to pick this back up and I'm hoping to spend many winter nights down here uh, spinning eventually getting to spin our own alpaca fiber into yarn which will be really cool down there yeah, yeah these are some different fibers these were these were my mistakes right here but look how beautiful these fibers are so lovely be careful that See, one looks right. like Elsa's hair. Is, that one looks like Elsa hair because it's a braid. <laughs> You're sweet, then. So these are different fibers I was playing with. And then, of I course, we have our stickers down movie. here. What'd you say? Speaking of movies, can we watch a Christmas movie? Maybe this afternoon when it's screen time, okay? Hey, Jack. What's up? You got to start oh, your school? Done here now. Oh, yeah, you did yours early. Good job. Day off. Enjoy yeah. it. Part of my big boys doing their school is that they get to kind of like pace and manage. And so Jackson's personality is he likes to get things done early and take days off. So he's enjoying a day off today. All right, I'm gonna check these pumpkin seeds. I'm gonna stir them around a little bit. They're not quite toasty, but they are starting to get a little harder. Pumpkin seeds, um, like those, I just put this salted ghee on them so they'll be a little bit salty uh, you just put a little bit of any oil to get your seasoning to stick you can do chipotle powder chili powder you can make them like a little on the sweeter side and do like cinnamon sugar on them that's good you can make them savory or sweet or just plain by roasting them with salt and butter look at that goodness in that working oven i know i'm being ridiculously excessive but seriously i'm so happy to have my oven working again. I'm so happy. So I'm gonna finish this food, make some more rounds of these pumpkin seeds. Literally, if they've been in there for about 12 minutes, I'm probably gonna give them about four more. Uh, once they get just a little brown and toasty and then I'll lay them on like a towel to dry. And at that point you just put them up in like a air sealed container, a bag or a jar or whatever, and you keep them in the pantry. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to refrigerate them or anything. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today in my kitchen, which is fully functional again. So happy. I bless you guys. Until next time.